It feels like I've played nothing but one open world game after another for close to a year now, and due to that experience, I've narrowed down the criteria for a successful open world game down to just one point. Does it make use of its vast space and make me want to explore it? Or do I treat my objectives like a trip to the post office? What's the point of an open world game where the protagonist is the only person to inhabit it, since an empty city where everyone remembered to lock their doors and turn off their stove five minutes before being raptured away is about as fun to explore as those child blankets we all had that had city streets woven into them. It might have worked if they were aiming for a sense of loneliness and paranoia, but they only got around to the paranoia bit, since from the very beginning you're teamed up with a ghost who possesses your body and never shuts the hell up, so you can't even be alone with your appreciation for Japanese culture, and appreciate it you will. Most of the game's world building seems to be been written by the Japanese tourism board. I don't know if Bethesda got the memo, but the only people obsessed with Japanese culture enough to appreciate this walking tour of Shibuya prefer culture lessons in between the TNA that anime provides. And while this game's writing is about on the same level as a lot of that, it definitely doesn't involve enough 14 year olds with boob jobs to get their dollar. Some of it is appropriate, such as learning about the various folklore monsters you actually encounter. Other times it's just stuffing your face full of popular Japanese snack foods to refill your health, which has to be the most laughable mechanic in a game where you harness internal spirit energies to shoot ghosts with elemental powers but you need to grab a box of Pocky and down it with a few cans of green tea to recover. It brings the tone of the game into question. I went into this expecting something of a horror experience, and at first it seems that's exactly what you'll get with the first enemy you fight being Slenderman straight from the early 2010s. But then later I came across the ghost of a man who died while waiting for a public toilet and can't move on because of it, and then discovered that the person who occupied the toilet until this man died also died on the toilet and can't move on until you grab him two rolls of toilet paper. I'm reminded of the anime Ghost Stories, an anime that was so bland in its original Japanese release that the English local team was allowed to get drunk and write whatever the hell they wanted just to get it to sell, which resulted in a story about traditional Japanese ghosts transforming into a raunchy comedy. Unfortunately, none of the localization team for Ghostwire Tokyo were allowed to get blitzed, so it has to go without the early 2000s racist humor when that's the only thing that could have saved it. The game opens on the aftermath of a car wreck, something there should be a lot more of since the entire population of the city was instantly turned into spirits without warning, so anyone in a car when that happened would have left behind a pile of clothes and 60 miles per hour of kinetic energy still on the road. But the fog seems to have happened when the entire population decided to walk to their destination. Our main character is supposed to be Akito, but he's just the body that the main character occupies. You see, Akito was hit by a car or thrown from a car in a wreck. Whichever the case, he was a stone-dead corpse, which just so happens to be what KK, a disembodied spirit, needed. So he possesses him, which sadly brings Akito back to life, along with granting him an assortment of powers that KK had when he had his own body. For some reason, KK is located entirely in Akito's right hand, which is the only limb KK has control over. There's little disparity between them. One is a slightly bitter spirit detective with an estranged family that you never interact with, and the other is an older brother who is detached from his younger sister after their parents died and she was injured in a house fire. Normally you would want two characters who would compare and contrast one another, but this main character feels like the result of the game asking me to adjust the picture until the image is barely visible. Personally, I think KK chose Akito as host due to them both favoring chess backpacks, something I'm now naming peck packs, which are never used despite being so important that the two people that make up the main character both wear one. There's already piles of clothes all over the street after their wearers were turned into spirits by the magic fog, but for whatever unexplained reason, these three randos were not affected by it, and despite seeing everyone around them vanish, these guys are unfazed and only concerned with a car wreck. These three then get spirited away a second later when another wave of fog rolls in. They were just awkwardly inserted to show you what's going on. No one seems to be wearing underwear in Japan, seeing as all the clothing piles people leave behind are made of nothing but outerwear. Obey great soul. Heed my call. The person responsible for the fog hacks the billboards to deliver a sermon on why flesh is bad to a city he has just emptied of anyone capable of hearing it. Would have made way more sense to do this before you sent in the fog. A part of me is wondering how much of the actual sarin gas attacks on Japanese subways in the 90s carried out by a cult inspired this game's plot. I'm betting a lot. What am I supposed to do? You don't have a choice about it. Obey me! No, I can't! Something I have to do. KK wants to go do something with Akito's body, but whatever that something was will never be explained, because before Akito will help KK, he wants to go see his sister in the hospital, which is a weird demand to make since by all accounts she should be nothing but a hospital gown by this point like everyone else. And luckily for KK, he chose to possess the brother of the girl which the man who killed him wants for unknown reasons, so unknown that the game doesn't even seem to know why. Shinji Mikami is the one who founded Tango Gameworks, and that man created the Resident Evil series and then the Evil Within, where he mainly designed enemies around zombies and giant eyeballs with teeth. But even within those constraints, he managed to create some of the most famous enemies in games, and when given the opportunity to create something around ghosts, he decided to plop early 2010's internet cryptid Slenderman down as the most common enemy you'll face. And Slenderman doesn't really fit in when you're expecting Japanese themes to the monsters, even if the game tries to pretend 
pretend that this visitor, as it calls them, is invoking the image of Japanese salarymen. We all know who it actually is. The rest of the visitors are made up of headless high schoolers, receptionists, and most terrifying of all, little girls in raincoats who blow stranger danger whistles if you come near them. I even noticed a few flying enemies who are just ghosts wearing bedsheets. As far as combat goes, it works, but pointing your fingers at enemies and shooting wind at them is about as satisfying as lighting Akito's farts on fire. And you only get three types of attacks, wind, fire, and water, filling the roles of a pistol, grenade launcher, and shotgun, which all still need to be individually reloaded despite being shot from your fingertips. So after every fight, you will run around whacking ghost furniture in the game to turn them into ammo points for each of your weapons. The villains in this game are all about presentation instead of substance, so they can never just leave the environment alone and change it into some spirit world screensaver that doesn't functionally do anything. I keep calling this guy the villain because the game never gave me a name beyond the subtitle which referred to him as Man and Hanya Mask. You have touched the other side, yet remain alive and well. One could hardly ask for a better observer. With this, my plan is complete. The only reason Hanya decided to abduct Mari and use her for a ceremony is due to her not vanishing with the fog. Solid enough reason, I guess, if you're the one pulling the strings and that's what you're looking for. But no reason is ever given for why Mari was able to do that. She's just an injured girl in a hospital after being torched in a house fire. And was Hanya expecting this to happen to someone? Because he makes it clear that Mari is vital for his plan. But if everyone in Shibuya had been turned into spirits by the fog, he would have been stuck with an empty city and no way to continue his ritual. And how did he even know that this one random girl in a hospital had remained? I told you to keep your hands off! After dying like 2 and now Ghostwire Tokyo. I hope we've seen an end to open world games or revolve around searching the map to find your missing sister and save her from the hands of a villain. <laughs> Thank god Akito was wearing that peck pack. Must have taken some of the blow for it. Oh no, it went clean through him. I guess it actually contains nothing and is worn as a fashion statement. It's been three seconds in the real world. One more breath and you're gone. No, I can't die yet. You've got one way out of this. Give me your body. I'll save your sister. As bad as Cyberpunk 2077 was, at least it had the proper existential dread of possibly having your body taken over by someone else. Now we're doing intros? Fine. Call me KK. Gave up my real name. Have you actually given up your real name if you're just going by your initials? Most of the map is covered by fog, so the only way to make progress is by clearing the fog area by area, which you do by purifying Tory gates around the city. You'll be doing this over and over again as the game tries to justify a reason for being open world. Another thing you'll be doing as you walk through the empty streets is absorb the lost souls of people into paper Katashiro talismans so you can fax them outside of Shibuya, where they will return to their original human forms. I wish I was off my meds, because then that sentence would seem perfectly reasonable to me. Turns out that KK spirit detective friends somehow modified every payphone in the city so they could scan talismans and transmit the contained souls through phone lines. Also, once outside, the people turned into spirits are supposed to return to normal, but wouldn't they be naked since their clothes were left while they were standing when the fog rolled in? KK uses every finger in Akito's right hand to dial which stands out sharply from every other human who uses a single digit. Ed built these things. Hold that Katashiro up to it. For someone in such a vital role, you never get to talk with Ed. He just leaves voice recordings for you to listen to. I guess his house slowly filling up with the 200,000 confused and traumatized nude people who are faxing to him isn't going to make him get up and answer the damn phone. There are shops by snack food run by yokai cats that from time to time reference the merchant from Resident Evil 4. Yes, Shinji Mikami, we know you made Resident Evil 4. I don't see why Akito actually goes through buying anything from them. It's not like the convenience store actually belongs to the cat. He could just take whatever snack food he needs to top off his health since there's no one there to stop him. Because I think you're stealing anyway, since the cat is the one pocketing the money. Did KK not use his door key? He had to make hand seals anytime he wanted to get inside his apartment. KK's spirit powers also allow Akito to follow someone's trail. No idea how this one works, since it seems to only detect plot important characters who were previously in the area and leave a spirit orb that you can activate so you can see where they were headed. I found that bow of yours inside a shrine. You mean stole? All property is theft, kid. Things just got worse. We're possessed by a communist. I guess it's not that weird of a political stance for someone who sees possession of another person's body without their permission. The Hanya's trail goes cold because spirit trails are washed away in the rain or something. So KK has the brilliant idea that they should get someplace high to see if they can spot him. In a wide open area, that might work. But this is a dense city where line of sight is broken by streets full of buildings. The chances of actually spotting the guy would be low. So of course it actually works and they spot him going into the subway. This chapter is titled A Maze of Death. It's missing two things, however. Namely, a maze and death. It's just an empty subway. Why are we fighting? Because that's me! 
He made this monstrosity out of my body! Turns out this Hanya was created from KK's old body, which makes him reluctant to attack it. So it captures KK instead by pulling him out of Akito, and then leaves without doing anything about Akito, who is now defenseless and left with a terrible stealth section for a while, since without KK, he has no powers to defend himself other than the bow. Having another person's spear ripped out of you is a perfect time to reminisce about that time you had a fight with your sister about visiting their dead parent's grave. Now what? And Mari? How will I find her? Somehow KK's apartment holds the key to solving this new dilemma. Akito just knows because KK had a ridiculous computer set up that will somehow help him track down KK's spirit or his sister. Every character likes to change the background of their scene when Akito shows up. These are cutscenes, not a damn phone background. You need his power, right? Yeah, but I don't know where they took him. <laughs> so, you haven't realized it yet then? Your connection to him. It's still there, you know. No, he didn't. I didn't either because it doesn't show up until after this cutscene. I guess a super obvious trail of black energy just can't be seen until someone else points it out. Give this to him for me. It's important. You took that from his desk, so I don't think the photo of his family was something KK had forgotten about since he kept it close by while he was alive. So after catching KK, his Hanya-controlled body simply stowed him away inside a shrine and took off. Was that the plan? Earlier, KK mentioned that once a spirit was trapped inside one of these boxes, there was no hope of saving it. Here's Akito opening one by gently touching it and nothing more. When KK was searching for a body to inhabit at the start of the game, he couldn't possess anyone still alive. That's why he chose Akito who had just died in a motor accident, but that's forgotten now because KK can enter Akito's body no problem. Ah, so the peck pack is where KK is stored. Consensual spirit possession is powerful stuff. KK possessing Akito this time causes Akito's outfit to change into what KK is wearing. It must be hard, huh? The lone wolf stuck riding shotgun? What's even harder is figuring out which payphone to call that Akito would be standing in range of to hear. Uh, sorry. I wasn't talking to you. I met your roommate in there. Rinko. Looks like neither of us made it as worm food. Here we have a cutscene where one ghost is talking to us over the phone, and we have to hold up our hand to the receiver so the ghost inside of us can talk with her. Everything having to do with phones in this game is so bizarre. And you're still such a charmer, but I'm glad you're okay. You're glad he's okay? He died. And so did you. The source of that fog's inside the Sengoku Center building. Rinko informed them that the source of the fog in this area is this building. And when they arrive, they find that she already went inside, using the door politely even though she's a ghost. Go figure. I'm sorry, but this game is going to have to explain to me why KK needs to possess Akito to do anything, while Rinko has no such limitations. Somehow Rinko, a ghost with no body, is using a holographic touch screen to hack a computer while KK can't even make a phone call without using Akito's hand. That Tori gate's only visible at a high ambient ether level. This device messes with ether levels to stop that from happening, so it'll remain invisible. That's how they're spreading the fog in secret in the mortal world. We're dealing with ancient Omyo magic in the spirit world, but there's a machine in this random building that makes the Tori gates that produce the fog invisible. So Rinko must hack it to shut down the device so they can purify the Tori gate and move on. Do the Hanya look like they're high technology? How did they come by an invisibility machine? Rinko walked through the building normally to reach this area. Now that she's done, she can just teleport out. Are you getting suspicious of Rinko? You're damn right I am. Gotta figure out what happened to her. There's a phone booth with a different color mark than the others. Find it, and it'll connect us to Ed. We're gonna need a telephone card to use it, though. Why would you make it so difficult to call Ed? Couldn't you just call him from any of the hacked payphones? Why one specifically? And why a telephone card? I don't need to use one when I'm faxing people's spirits over the line. I'm sorry I can't come to the phone. Many unforeseen happenings. On that note, let me report my status. Only Dale and I managed to escape Shibuya as originally planned. Ed can't come to the phone because of many unforeseen happenings. Those unforeseen happenings involve the death of two of his teammates and the spirits that are being sent through his rigged payphones. But taking a call from the person who could be a supposed dead friend sending said souls is impossible. It's not like anyone else could even be calling this number since it had to come from a specific payphone in Shibuya. So who does Ed think he's leaving the message for? Inside Rinko's apartment there are a lot of cats, but not a single litter box. After Rinko died, she headed to her apartment to wait for her friend Erika to show up. Rinko believing Erika would have been able to come to their apartment when every living person in Shibuya had been turned into a spirit throws her thought process into question. 
But while waiting there, one of the Hanya, using Erika's body, attacked and absorbed Rinko's spirit, taking on her appearance. Meaning the Rinko that's been helping Akito and KK is actually one of the Hanya, but she's done nothing but assist the two of them, and only just a minute ago finally attempted to lead them into a barrier trap. The Hanya had already won after taking KK away from Akito. Had she not told Akito how to find KK, and then later shut down the machine hiding the invisible Tori gate, the Hanya tries to trap them inside the spirit world, and at the end you free Rinko from the Hanya's control, then find yourself outside the apartment building, where you search a nearby children's park for Rinko. But for some reason Rinko isn't there anymore, having wandered off somewhere in the mere minutes after Akito and KK just saved her, and instead calls the payphone next to the park to tell them. I know where the fog around here is coming from now. I'll fill you in. Now? Oh, uh, uh, let me find a pen or something. No need. The nice thing about being in this form is that the physical doesn't hold me back anymore. I'll just transmit it to you now. You can just download information into Akito's head through the telephone because you're a ghost, and you're just sending him an address. I think brain downloading is a little overkill. She had no issue just verbally telling them the location of the invisibility machine. Akito opens up the wayside shrine with his bare hands. Those two rock slabs had to weigh several tons each, and there's no recess for them to slide into since you can see the edges from the outside. At the end of the tunnel beneath the shrine is a large chamber with what I'm guessing is a special stone for the ceremony, but none of this is explained so I can't say for sure. This game refuses to develop mystery and intrigue when it easily could. No, no. We can't have our lab rats scurrying from their cages. You! KK! I have no more use for either of you. Akito and KK are not lab rats. They don't factor in any part of your plan and their actions have done nothing to assist you. So unless this is some ploy to gaslight them, I think Hanya is just incoherently villain rambling. Hanya has a zombie daughter or whatever attack Akito, and it becomes a stealth fight after she rips KK out of him. I beat this boss by hiding in the same spot and just yanking its tail whenever it walked past. You can shoot elemental magic from your fingertips. Why are you trying to punch the guy? Luckily for Hanya, this ancient magical stone that summons Deidara Bochi was found in a park inside Shibuya, a highly developed and populated city, and no one ever once noticed it. For some reason, this ceremony needs to be held at famous Tokyo landmarks. We're not going to be able to get anywhere near that. The whole area is covered in fog. It'll rip our souls clean out if we go blundering around in there. That was Rinko's custom ride. What's custom about it? Got some kind of anti-spirit tech, from what I heard. In order to reach Tokyo Tower, they have to pass through thick fog they can't clear through cleansing Tori gates, so they decide to use Rinko's custom motorcycle that has anti-spirit tech. It's bossed and needs a replacement turbine wheel that they take from a Lambo which would never fit inside a motorcycle, and fragrant underworld oil they just happen to find. I didn't have all day to wait for you to pick up, so I rigged this phone to ring periodically and play back a recording. Ed is so busy with whatever he's doing, that he rigged this phone that he just knew they would be around to ring periodically, and then play a voice recording with information on how to find spirit oil, that he also knew they would be out of and how to find some more. Any idea where to look? Not yet. Let's find a good vantage point, scope out the area. Around here, best bet might be the Mitake real estate building. I don't think you need to get up high to find a car when those are parked all over the place. My baby will only take parts from exotic vehicles. Regular parts won't cut it. But if you head under the scramble crossing, there's a car show going on. I don't think Rinko knows how to make motorcycles if she used sports car parts to build it. So the fragrant underworld oil acts just like nitro? I wouldn't be driving a bike that fast with near zero visibility and no helmet. How is Rinko injured? She's a ghost. I can't quite bring myself to believe in the afterlife. Even though I'm like this. That just means you're an idiot. How do you become a ghost hunter if you don't believe in the afterlife? So Rinko's clothes weren't part of her ghost body? Because when she departs for the afterlife, her clothes are left behind like all the people who were turned into spirits by the fog. Speaking of which, how did she reach Tokyo Tower through the fog? Akito and KK needed a special motorcycle to get through it. What the hell? Is this guy's endgame? I'm wondering the same thing. Anya is still broadcasting to a city that is completely empty of people who can hear it. Hallucinations will always tell you how much you suck, cliche. I have all the souls that I require. I will use them to shatter the barrier between life and death. And then I shall create a new paradise, though modest it will be. A place where the souls of my wife and daughter will shine for all eternity. 
Let me see if I can work out Hanya's intentions. His wife died, and that made him so sad that he started researching the afterlife. Now he's obsessed with the idea that bodies are just shells for a person's true self, and wants to unite the living world with the spirit world to make some kind of paradise. Isn't that what the afterlife is already for? It feels like he wouldn't be actually accomplishing anything. And why he needs Mari is still completely arbitrary and it feels like it's done just to motivate Akito to do something. Perhaps she will even lead this new world. A new Mary for a new age. No, a new Eve. That metaphor doesn't even work. This is all based around Japanese spirituality and folklore, not Christianity. Why are you so certain that her spirit wishes to return to this shell? I... Can you imagine what your sister endures beneath these bandages? She doesn't look that bad, actually, and Mari was only injured in a house fire. Sure, her and Akito's parents were dead and her brother has been distant, but that's hardly the level of suffering the game is making it out to be. Soon, my dream will be made manifest. I thought this was where your dream would be made manifest. Did you just need to get up to a high spot to get inside the Daydara Bochi? I can do this myself. I'll kick my own ass. Now that's writing. You're at the end of the game and you've completely foregone developing the relationship between the big brother and little sister. How do you rectify that with so little time? Have the player walk through a series of hallways all themed around their relationship, while relevant voice lines echo around you to show how close they once were and how distant they became after their parents died. Nice of the spirit world to put together a 10 minute amusement ride similar to the Hall of Presidents ride at Disneyland to develop what should have been laid out before any turmoil actually happened. I really have no idea what's happening here. Hanya shocks Mari with lightning, which causes all the souls he's captured to pour into her, and that blows a hole to the underworld open, but that's not enough because then Hanya tries to stop time, but that doesn't work out the way he wants because Mari doesn't want to do this, even though she's been comatose this entire time and wouldn't even know that she's been taken from the hospital. And then Hanya gets knocked into the well of the underworld after he tries to shoot Mari, which would have also screwed up his plans because he needs her for the ritual. I wanted to apologize. I know you have. It's what kept me here. It wasn't your fault. You don't need this much staggered breathing for this moment. She never blamed him. She wants him to go on living, and no one cares because they didn't develop any of this relationship. Then she dies even though nothing happened to her. Hanya crawls out of the hole with his wife and daughter clinging to him, then merges with them to become a snake fish thing that serves as your final boss. I guess because your principal way of finishing off enemies was using a magical fishing line to rip out their cores. So do we have to do anything to close that giant hole to the underworld? Or did that take care of itself on its own? I won't keep pretending it doesn't hurt. I'm gonna live. Even if it means... I'm glad you could come to this generic resolution without the spirits of your dead parents saying even a single word. KK passes on too, taking his powers with him, which hopefully means this game never gets a sequel like its naming scheme implies. You just know they made Tokyo a subtitle so they could hunt ghosts in other culturally significant cities. 